I was born in Portland. This is my hometown. This is my home state. I love this place. It is special. We do do it differently here. Is it different than the way other places do it? Absolutely. The people here are different because they understand that living here carries a responsibility uh, to live in a different way and that we want to move in a trajectory that's different than where American cities have gone in the past. To understand how and why Portland marches to its own drummer, it's best to start outside the city. This is a kind of remarkable landscape. It's one of the reasons people feel so passionate about the place. And it's got a magnificent scenic setting with uh, snow-capped volcanoes to the east, coast range to the west, and this rich valley that has been cultivated for thousands of years. It's not an accident that you can get in a car and be outside of the urban growth boundary and in an amazingly beautiful place in 20 minutes from virtually anywhere in Portland. The heart of Portland's revolutionary land use system is an urban growth boundary, a 260 mile line drawn around the city. Outside of this line, residential and industrial development is severely restricted. The importance of urban growth boundaries is that they're very simple and they're very clear. Inside the boundary, we have a city. That's where we want development, we want growth, we want investment. And outside of it, we have land needed for other things, for farming, for ranching, for forestry, for natural resources. One of the things I was really delighted by as I walked the urban growth boundary was to experience the many different landscapes that the, the city comes right up next to. So there'd be open fields like this and there'd be wheat fields out by Hillsborough and uh, forests and sometimes berry patches and orchards, uh, vineyards with uh, wineries attached to them right next to the city. Can you do that? Here, take your bag. Okay, take your bag. <laughs> and let's go get our stuff. For Debbie Schmugar and her children, the close okay, proximity to the countryside okay, is a big part of their lives. I come out to the farm because I want my girls to see a farm in action. On help days, the kids can come out and learn what it's like to pick from a huge field, or to bundle up the corn stalks, or to go out and see where the pumpkins actually come from. They don't just sit on a shelf at the store, but they actually grow in a vine. <laughs> that's why we come out to the farm. The food's great. I think that's the bonus for us. There's the hiking, there's the coast, you can go up to the mountains. Everything's here. Hey girls, I have a test for you. Oh, no. I have a test. We have the country, the forest, but we also have Portland, the city itself. So you're the best of both worlds. I wouldn't want to change this. A lot fours on up there. It's a long, narrow. Some believe that the costs of preserving the countryside are not being shared equally. Tom and Gloria Gilbert live just outside the urban growth boundary on seven acres of land. I retired in 1992, and uh, with the very little savings, with the prospect of building to supplement my savings and my Social Security. What we're trying to do here is to subdivide this land, sell a few of the lots so that we can have a retirement income. We need to build the houses. Why let the land sit here? Because some city folk want to come out and see open spaces. The urban growth boundary was drawn right next to Fred Netter's farm. My farmland is only worth six to $8,000 an acre. The land next to me that was in the urban growth boundary was worth $100,000 an acre. That's what 30 some years of land use planning has done for us. Whoever drew that line, that's like playing God. All we're trying to do is maximize our value on our property. That's what it's all about. People should be able to sell their assets for as much as what they can get for them. The battle between people who believe in the community having the power to, to plan its future and people who believe that that is too much of an intrusion on individuals and individual liberty, that battle I think will always be with us and it'll be part of the 
the pushing, pulling, and struggling that we need to do on a regular basis to ensure that a community is planning our future. Most of the population of the planet within a few years is going to be living in urban areas. And it is crucially important now and increasingly so in the future that we really get a handle on how to make good cities that are pleasant and livable and good for people. And the Portland experiment is really an important step along that direction to make cities good, livable places. This is something that is important not only for Portland, but I think is globally important.